What's up y'all? I'm out here at the range again under some clear blue skies. I got a bunch of jelly testing planned for today and as you can see by the title on this one it's going to be a 357 versus 327. Let me show you what we got. As always the jelly contraption is on duty out here ready for work. I got two clear blocks of gel here freshly melted. This one's freshly melted. The one on the back's got a couple little partial tracks. Uh, those were left from the session I had before this. I actually didn't use this block but some from the test previous went into this block i didn't want to melt this down just because those two little tracks so that shouldn't interfere with any of the test today if it does happen to we'll worry about that when it happens but like i said this was 327 mag versus 357 mag now the only 327 factory ammo i have right now is this federal premium hammer down 127 grain jacketed hollow point these are actually bonded hollow points and like i say 127 grain not meant for these small little revolvers they're meant more for a lever action obviously but we're gonna run them through this revolver anyway because like i say it's the only 327 i got i do actually have some dies for 327 and uh some xtp projectiles so i'll definitely be loading some of those up more of a defensive type around and see how those do now for the 357 mag round this was a tough call on what to use here i wanted to kind of make it even as far as the ammo goes not necessarily the weight because uh you know 357 is anywhere from 125 to 158 to 180 just a wide range of weights on this 357 so what i did was kind of hit the middle of it i got some 140 grain ftx lever evolution so these also not meant for these small little revolvers and self-defense meant more for a, a lever action type of rifle so i figured this would be a pretty decent comparison between two rounds that aren't really meant for these small revolvers now as for the tools for our 357 we got the taurus 605 two inch barrel and for the 327 we got the taurus 327 with the two inch barrel so very very similar tools basically identical other than the chambering but this ought to be a pretty good test i'm very interested in to see how this 327 is going to compare to this 357 um on the very first trial of this 327 revolver running these magnums it was a snappy little thing so i i got a feeling they're gonna be pretty even but let me get everything set up and let's get started all right y'all as usual we're gonna get us some speeds out of these things and see what we're working with i'm gonna start with the 327 magnum out of the taurus 327 uh those of y'all who watched my unbox and kind of first shots of this thing y'all notice my grips are a little different here they're the same brand same g10 vz branded grips uh same color and everything except these are smooth um i didn't like those grooved ones just so so take this for what it's worth those grooved ones are not the way to go like the ones that fit on the defender uh, i'll leave a link to my unboxing of this if y'all hadn't seen it so you'll know what i mean it just it just digs into the palm of your hand it's just not a good way to go with something like this magnum for sure so anyway Anyway, let's get these three rounds and see what kind of speeds we're working with. Eleven twenty-four. Eleven thirty-four. And eleven fifty-eight. So definitely a much better experience with these smooth grips. Let's go down there and check the average on that. All right. So our three-round average on the three twenty-seven Magnum is eleven hundred thirty-eight feet per second. That's some pretty decent speed out of this two-inch revolver. But let's get all this reset and let's check out that three fifty-seven. All right, y'all. Here we go with the three fifty-seven this time. This is going to be interesting to see what the speeds are on this, being that it's a heavier round, but it has a bigger case, so more powder, more velocity. I think we're going to be pretty even on this, even. Though the weight difference so let's see what we got y'all three rounds 1201 1215 and 1187 so faster out of this even with the heavier projectile let's go down there and check that average all right y'all we broke 1200 with this one the three round average with the 357 magnum was 1201 feet per second and if you remember off the 327 it was 1138 so you're talking about 63 feet per second more out of the 357 magnum even with that heavier projectile so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the jail with these two let me get everything set up and y'all know what time it is all right, y'all, it's two versus five jelly time. I'm gonna put one round out of each one of these down there into the gel and see what they do. We're gonna start out with the 327 Magnum. Here we go, y'all. 
All right, good clean hit, pretty much in the center of the block, which I really didn't want, but let's go down there and check that out. All right, y'all, that's some good looking performance down there just at first glance out of that 327. I really wasn't sure what to expect, being that the ammo's not really designed for these revolvers, but that stuff looks like it did really good. So let's see what this 357 will do with the heavier projectile, y'all. All right, perfect. That's actually where I wanted to put the 327, but I think that might have curved out the top of the block. Let me go down there and check. All right, y'all, that was almost perfect. It didn't come completely out of the block, but the projectile is poking out of the block down there on the second block at the top. So it's probably a valid test, but I think it warrants taking another round just because of the way it ended up. So let's try it again. I'm gonna try to put this right up under the first one. All right, exactly where I wanted to put it. That should be a good one. Let's go down there and check it out and see what we got. All right, y'all, let's take a look at what we got here. I had to back y'all up a good bit just because that second shot I had to take kind of got behind the 327. But I think this angle, y'all can see both of them or, or all three of them, actually. So what we got here, that one on the top, we'll, we'll talk about that first. That was the first 357 I took. As you can see, came in huge wound channel like 357 always does. Traveled on out and you see it started curving up on me, losing a bunch of material along the way. And then you can see the projectile sitting up top right there. Didn't come completely out and after seeing the second shot i took that was definitely a valid test i could have just left that but i wanted to be definitely sure about that but as for the ones we we're actually looking at here the one in the very front here down at the bottom that's the 327 you can see here fantastic wound channel out of that thing looks like it did lose maybe a little bit of fragments of stuff in there i can kind of tell uh traveled on out here went into the second block looks like about three inches into that second block actually and then re it a little bit looks like the expansion is actually pretty doggone good to be out of a two inch barrel and not, to be not really a, a self-defense type of round but that bonded projectile really got some nice expansion to be just a two inch barrel now above that and a little bit behind it is the second 357 i took fantastic wound channel again looks pretty much like the first one i took there lots of fragments of jacket and lead coming apart through there usually you always see that with 357 unless it's a really really good bonded round most 357s i've tested have come apart in this jail so carries on down here it looks like it lost the little uh, red ftx projectile piece right there went into the second block still traveling looks like it's a good it's almost halfway through this second block I would say, uh, I don't know, a good seven inches into that second block, six, seven inches, and definitely not as much expansion as the 327, but it actually expanded a little more than I thought it would uh, for being not a defensive type of round. Now, as for the penetration measurements here, the 327 came all the way out here to 19 inches and rebounded about an inch or so so 19 inches on that 327 now the 357 is all the way out here at 22 and three quarters of an inch 22 and three quarters of an inch both of these actually actually the one on the top went a little bit further that one's about 23 and a quarter so it actually went about a half inch further that's probably because it lost some resistance up there but as for the one that's down in the jail like i say 22 and three quarters of an inch of penetration out of that 357. i want to give you all a little bit of a closer look at the wound channels before i pull the projectiles like i say the one on the bottom 327 the one on the top 357 so as you can see fantastic wound channels out of both of them back here on the back side you can see the 357 wound channels better that top one that's all 357 that's the one that went out the top and then the bottom one you can see that's 357 also but just coming all to pieces like i mean just lots of fragments huge wound action just a lot of energy spilling into that jail and then you can see they kept on trucking there's that 357 not really expanding much there's the 327 and then again 
there's that first 357 even more fragments spilling out down there all right y'all let's look at our projectiles here right here is the 357 as you can see mangled all two pieces over here's the 327 really nice expansion out of this 327 uh these bonded any kind of bonded projectile just expands really nicely and stays together just makes a really nice flower when it expands like that honestly if i'd have known these hammer down projectiles were going to perform so well out of this 327 i'd have probably chose a more uh, defensive kind of geared uh 357 instead of like this hunting or, or lever action type of round but either way i mean this this thing still did some damage but uh as far as material loss you had a lot more here so let's measure them right now and see what kind of weights we got i don't think i lost much out of the 327 but may have lost a couple little specks so let's check them out so on the 327 we started out with 127 grains and now we've got 126 Point two, so may have lost a couple little speckles out of that one but not much as far as the 357 we started out at 140 and we're down to 125.2 so lost a bunch of material off of that 357 even the one that was poking out the top here that one lost even more 122.8 so these things lost a ton of material coming apart and you can see it all through the gel now as for the expansion size let's do the 327 first since it's going to be easier to measure it's very symmetrical here so on the 327 we got 545 549 and 543 so really nice symmetrical expansion out of that 327 magnum as for the 357 this one's going to be really uneven uh, this seems like the biggest part right here that one's five three five four nine two and a five one seven so definitely not near the expansion out of this 357 partly because it just came all apart in the gel but there you have it y'all the 327 versus the 357 there's no doubt that both of these rounds would get the job done um in a self-defense situation i mean it, it's really hard to say i would probably choose this 327 with these particular rounds now if, if it was an actual self-defense gear 357 round uh, my my choice may change there so maybe we'll do some more testing with some different 357 rounds but y'all let me know what y'all think about the performance of these two rounds and which one would you pick all right y'all first jelly test of the day done and it was a pretty interesting one the 357 magnum versus the 327 magnum both of these rounds did really nice out here really nice velocity out of them good performance in the gel the 327 it actually really surprised me uh that particular round i didn't expect it to perform as well as it did in the gel i didn't expect as much uh expansion out of them the penetration was still fantastic even with good expansion and a great wound channel out of it the the 357 on the other hand did pretty much exactly what i expected dumped a massive amount of energy in the gel started coming apart as soon as it got into the gel most 357 rounds i've tested have behaved like that they made a big old wound channel started coming all apart kept on coming all apart throughout the wound track and then rested wherever they came to rest at this particular one had massive penetration just because it lost a bunch of its material so it was less to slow it down so less expansion overall was left so it kept on trucking for sure like i said i picked this particular 357 round because i figured it would be kind of even both of them were geared towards more of a lever action rifle type of use but uh, now seeing what the performance was out at 327 magnum i may have been better off just choosing like a 125 or, or some other type of defensive geared 357 round but y'all let me know what y'all think about these two rounds i know several people out there carry the 357 some of y'all do carry 327 magnum so let me know what y'all think about the performance performance out of these two but if y'all enjoyed the video as always take a second reach down hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button and make sure you click that bell notification icon so you can get notified when i upload these new videos check out all my affiliate links down below in the description you know the deal with the amazon link if you shop through there anyway hit up that link first you go straight through amazon like normal from there and anything you buy anywhere on the site don't cost you anything extra but i do get a kickback from amazon towards the channel check out those axle affiliate ear pro links down below if you need some really good ear pro you can save 
some big money clicking those links instead of going straight through their site. I appreciate all my Range Gang members for reaching out and hitting that join button and every single one of y'all out there that supports the channel by watching the videos, hitting that thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button, and leave me these comments down below. Like I said, let me know what you think about these two rounds. This was just the first of a bunch of jelly tests I got planned out here today, so y'all make sure y'all stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.